bring a backpack to tell us. That's why he always says he literally just brings a backpack.
Fourth of July and our independence the Sunday before or the Sunday after? So we chose the Sunday before just to get you going. I want to thank everyone who was here and helped with Pat French's memorial service. Uh, everything went so well. The family was very appreciative of everyone, and um, it was a blessing. She had been a blessing to us for many years. Bible studies, Sunday morning, today, at 11 o'clock, The Chosen continues. And then beginning on Tuesday and Thursday, July 9th, and 11th, so not this week, but the following week, we'll be getting, be beginning the second season of The Chosen. So I will put out an email as to what book to get, and if you would like me to order a book for you, I will, I will do so. So please let me know, but I will put out an email. Sunday, July the 14th, we're going to do a potluck following service, and Sheila and Laura, there's going to be water games for kids. And adults, we can stay inside and maybe play bunco or something. I don't know. Or just talk. But uh, we'll have a potluck that day, which means you have to bring something. You don't just show up. Well, I usually do. But anyway. Um, so please keep that in mind. Are there any other announcements I need to be aware of? I just want to thank everybody for making BBS such a wonderful weekend. My volunteers, the people that came, the children, it was a fun time. Yeah. And I enjoyed it. I hope you all did too. Absolutely. Thank you very much. So, as we begin our worship this morning, um, I would just welcome you all. So, as you can tell, I'm, I've made my way up here. And I have to thank Cindy, Pastor Cindy, for, for presiding over communion all this time, although I have not been able to. Let's all please stand. Into your hands we commit our lives. Into your hands we commit your church. Our worship this morning begins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's take a moment for silence and for self-examination. <clears throat> okay. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our full heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our opening again.
the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We'll sing our hymn of praise now. With a smile, please. Book of Lamentations is one of our most important sources of information about the fall of Jerusalem to the Babylonians in about 587 BCE. Though the people admit God's judgment, judgment was just, today's reading declares a fervent trust that God will not leave them forever. Our first reading comes from Lamentations chapter 3, starting with the 27th verse. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in you to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust, there may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter, and to be filled with insults. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. So we have our first reading. Now here, Paul encourages the Corinthians to honor their commi commitment to participate in the collection his churches are organizing for the Christians in Jerusalem. He presents Jesus as an example of selfless stewardship and reminds them that Christians have received abundantly so that they may share abundantly. Our second reading this morning comes from 2 Corinthians, chapter 8, starting with the 7th verse. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous understanding. I do not say this as a command. But I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. 
it is appropriate for you, who began last year, not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by com completing it in according, in according to your needs. For if there is eagerness, if eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be there for your need in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who has much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. So in verse Some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not you do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he entered 
He said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. They laughed at him. Then he put them outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord. You see that as we sing, there's a whiteness in God's mercy. Thank you. of our hearts be acceptable to you and to you alone for you are our Redeemer. Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well grace to you and peace from our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ who was, who is, and who will what? Always be. You know there's a 
something to say about the text today, right? We start with Lamentations. And if you notice, we sing part of Lamentations right at the beginning and gathering. And we've done that for the last three weeks. What is it? The steadfast love. And I've been singing it not, it's a little different tune. It's off. Now, it's the same tune, but it's off and synchro. I think it's called syncopation. I don't know. Something like that. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never have come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. That's how we began this morning, truly. And one way to freedom is to understand the power of God's word. For those moments when we feel as though we're shackled, we're held down, or we're held captive, it is through God's word that there is hope that comes to us. Those who have been Christians forever or who know God's word will find that there are pieces that you find stuck in the middle of your heart. Have you ever noticed that? And when you come to a place where you don't have words to say, it is then that the power of God's word will come to you. I've been singing that for a long time now. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. I don't think we memorize enough. Some people memorize so much that they don't understand what's behind it. They just spew it. It doesn't matter if you can spew something. What matters is if you feel and understand something. I talked about that last week when I said we will feel the stories from the scriptures at times. And last week, I started my sermon talking about the fact that Jesus asked the disciples to go to the other side. And I explained that that side was the side of the Gentiles. And I also said that there was a demoniac on the other side who was really waiting to be healed. He had been shackled for years. And he was able, because of all the demons inside of him, to break the shackles. And it says he cut himself. He was trying to be destructive to his body because that which was inside of him was destroying him from the inside out. That's the story. Jesus made a specific, a specific decision to go to that side for a particular reason. One was to free someone who was bound and chained and in prison. And the demons knew the power because as Jesus came upon them, in fact, the whole fifth chapter is about freedom. Absolute freedom. The demons knew who they were dealing with. And they say to Jesus, what do you want to do with us, Jesus, son of the most high God? In God's name, don't torture me. Jesus asked the name. He says legion. And then the demons beg to be cast into the pigs. That doesn't mean anything to us. We eat pork all the time. But understand, it was the unclean willing to go to what was considered unclean, the pigs. And I had one person at my last church and she said, how terrible of Jesus to destroy that herd of pigs. She missed the point. The point was Jesus came to free that soul. He was so excited, he wanted to go and tell everyone. Actually, he wanted to stay with Jesus. Because Jesus was safe. And Jesus says, you go and tell people what I've done for you. And what's interesting is he doesn't say that to the Jewish people. He did say it to the Gentiles. And then 
He gets back in the boat, and where we began this morning was, now they cross back to the other side. So he had business on one side, which was to free a tortured soul, and he had freedom on, or he had the desire to go back to the other side to free two tortured souls. It's all about freedom. Sometimes we're shackled with physical things, and sometimes we're shackled with non-physical things. And I'm guessing everyone here has been there. And by that I mean non-physical in true shackles. Anymore we can hide the shackles of those who are kind of out of prison, but they have a shackle on their ankle. No one can see it, but it can be tracked, right? We know of those shackles. But there are the other shackles. So we tell the story over and over of this leader in the synagogue, Jairus, who was a man of means, but his daughter's dying. Wealthy means mean nothing, correct? If your daughter is dying, you're going to go to any extent. He's willing to come to Jesus, who is a little questionable right now. And as he comes to him, he says, my daughter's dying. Jesus goes, no problem, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. And he goes on his way. The shackles are set. Right? The shackles are set. It's not just the child who is shackled, but the parents who are shackled. And they're on the way, and everybody wants to touch Jesus. Everybody is out to be changed by him, to have him touch them. And here comes the woman, the unclean woman, the woman who has hemorrhaged for 12 years, and guys, you have no idea. None. And for her, that meant she was outside the community. Her shackles were not just physical, internally, but she became unclean. And therefore, she's outside the community. What does that mean? It means she's not allowed to be with her family. How would that feel? You'd all love to be there, right? Well, sometimes you want to be there. She's held. She doesn't know what to do. But she thinks to herself, if I just touch his clothes. And in one translation, one story, it says, if I just touch the hem of his garment. And that actually could have included the prayer, that prayer shawl that they wore. Who knows? But if I just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. Immediately when she touched him, he felt power go out. Now, I know we've read the story, but we don't always hear the story when it's read. I want you to feel the story here. He felt a power go out from him. He immediately stopped and he said, who, what? touched me. And his disciples thought he was nuts. They said, are you kidding me? Look at all the people around you. How can you say that? And this woman, in fear and trembling, knowing that she is, what? Unclean. Unclean. Says, I did it. Jesus calls her daughter. He doesn't condemn her. He calls her daughter and says, your faith has healed you. You go. And he proceeds on his way to Jairus' house. And while they're still on the way, what happens? The people come up and say, ah, no need for the teacher to come. Your daughter's dead. Can you imagine a sinking feeling in the parent's heart. Many of you have been there. It's sinking, isn't it? It's devastation. It's absolute overwhelming sense of loss. And Jesus says she's not sleeping or dead. She is merely sleeping. 
They laughed at him. He took Peter, James, and John because he wanted witnesses. He goes to the house and he takes the mother and the father and he goes to the room through the wailers and the wailers are laughing at him as he says she's only sleeping. And he then touches her. The shackles are broken. He says, little girl, get up. Get up, little girl. And she gets up. Give her something to eat. And what is story? Freedom. True freedom. That's what happens in the midst of chapter 5. Yes, we have freedom in our country, and we are thankful for the freedoms that we have. We have the freedom of speech. We have the freedom of, that's given to us in the Constitution and the amendments. We have freedom because people have died for us. Well, we also have freedom because Christ has died for us, because Christ brings his touch into our lives to change us that we might change others. And then he tells the parents of this little girl and his disciples, don't go tell anyone. Now he's told the other guy to tell people. He tells them not to tell anyone. Why? Because they're held by the zeal of their religion. So there's all kinds of ways that we are shackled. That you've been shackled, that I've been shackled. We all have moments in our lives when we can't seem to break loose. You felt them. Maybe they were early in your life. Maybe they're late. Maybe you feel unclean. Maybe you are unclean. As Lutherans, we kind of get a little bit of break on the uncleanliness, right? Why? Because we just keep going to that place. Uh, or we should say as Christians, we keep going to the place that Jesus died for us, and he freed us, and he freed each one of them with a touch or with a word. What is the word that you've gotten to receive some freedom? The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Sometimes we need to sing those things over and over those words from the scripture. We need to have them on our palate. We need to, in, in the Old Testament, doesn't it say this? There's one place in the Old Testament where some of the Bible had been lost, some of the scriptures had been lost. And when they found them and they read them, they said they tasted like honey. The words tasted like honey. Because there was freedom in the words for the people. You have freedom. You are unleashed. You are no longer unclean. You have been healed. And that is true freedom. We die in this world, people. Of all ages. Some of you have lost your children. Or your parents your siblings, your spouses, yet comes. But in Christ, there is life that follows earthly death. So we are free to live in baptism as though there is no death. He touches us. I don't know what your shackle is that he crossed to your side. I don't know what your illness is, but he crossed to your side. I don't know what your malady is, but he's crossed to your side. He's crossed to everyone's side. People just don't open their eyes to see. There are a lot of people who walk around with their eyes closed. Have you ever noticed that? No, it's not because they bump into things. It's because they get themselves in deep trouble. Or because they can't seem to see any relief ever. The steadfast love of the Lord, what? His mercies never hurt. They are new. New. 
Great is thy now that is freedom. Please stay. Gracious God, we thank you for the freedom we have in you, for the life we have been given, for the hope that is around us, for taking on that which is devastating that comes and touching us through others or through your spirit your word. Bring relief to those who are bound, hope to those who are hopeless, strength to those who are weak, and comfort to those who are hurting. This we ask in the name of our precious Lord who died for us, Jesus our Christ. Amen. Let's confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he arose again. He has sent into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated for the prayers of the church. We do have a prayer of thanksgiving because there's a beaming great grandmother who's in church and she wants to show everyone pictures of Landon, who was 10 pounds, 9? 9 pounds, 10 ounces. There we go. One in communion of the saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. God of abundance, you fill your church with a multitude of gifts. Sustain those among us who feel they are not valued. Open our hearts to the wondrous breath of all who call upon your name. In your mercy, in your prayer. God of creation, your goodness abounds. Multiply the fruits of the earth and rescue us from our wastefulness. In your mercy, in your prayer. God of justice, you reign in steadfast love. Bring peace between nations ravaged by war or strife and the looming paths of justice and freedom for those who lead them. In your mercy, God of compassion, your touch brings healing, and your word revives us for life. Hear our prayers for those amidst us, for John and Casey, the Lord's and of Son Dan, for Marvin and Bonnie, for Robert, Patty, Mike, Susan, for Alicia, for Lisa, for Gary, for Scott and Tammy, for Trudy and Donna, for Lola and Lily, for Linda and Naomi. We lift up Ray and Danny, Bob and Margaret, for Carol, Kirkegaard and Carol Smith, for Al, Linda, Dan and Haley, for Randy and Josh, Virginia. Thank you for the healing that's happening in my way. For Sydney and Jim, Donna and Dan, for Shirley, 
Lynn, we're thankful she's back in church. For Scott, Susan, Dennis, Matthew, as he waits to find out if he can have a heart. For Teresa, for Ron, for Lanita, for Ron crying as he is at his cousin's funeral. And we give you thanks, O oh Lord, for Landon, who's newly born. To do it well, words Jim Craig and Josh Hart. Be with all who are in need. And for doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers who provide care, turn wailing into dancing and weeping into joy. In your mercy. Yeah. We give you thanks, Lord, for Shelby and Rick Sasser, Lauren and Matthew, for Art and Diane and Jones, who, though they live in Nebraska, keep tabs of us and work for your goodness. For Javier and Victoria, Castillo, Caravaggio, and Raylan and Eberle, I will give you thanks. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We receive the offering at this time. Thank you. 
ourselves, our time, and our eyes. Receive them, O Lord, in the name of Christ who has freed us. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and to the community. This is my body given for you to do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. So we have been free from the shackles that hold us, from the pain that is there, even though there's always a lingering, right? And in this meal, God invites all of us to come. This is not held by anyone. It is only held by Christ. So you may be seated as you come forward, the ushers will meet. Thank mm -hmm. you.
body and blood of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen you, keeping you in his grace, his truth, and his love, now and forever. Amen. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and touch us with your hand, taking away the shackles that have held us. Remind us that true freedom comes from you, that as we go on our way today, we would be blessed with that thought and those words, and that we would serve you as a free people. This we ask in the name of Christ. Amen. I gotta say, in the there's a bomb in Gilead. If you cannot preach like Peter, and if you cannot, what was it, by like Paul? Pray like Paul. That the reason is people would fall asleep in Paul's sermons, and they one man fell out of a window and died. <laughs> we had to bring him back to life. So anyway, we all have our gifts, right? <laughs> laugh after we've received the greatest gift of all. Yes. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our closing hymn. <coughs> Thank you.